Hello everyone, my name is Georgie aka Crafty Rogue Gamer and welcome to my floss tube. This is floss tube number four. Um, welcome back if you've seen any of my other videos and just welcome if you're here for the first time. Um, just so you know what to expect if you're new, uh, we may get animal interruptions. I haven't got a snoring cat today, I've got a very sound asleep, different non-snoring cat. Still my cat, not, I've got two cats so it's okay, I've not stolen someone's. Um, although I would because we've got some really nice ones around the area. I would totally adopt them, um, but I'm not allowed any more animals yet. Um, Anyway, yeah, you'll get tangents. Um, if anything pops up in any of the corners or underneath, that's courtesy of my husband, JC, who is kind enough to edit my videos and inject his own form of comedy into them. Um, I've got no idea how long we'll go for today. I normally go, oh yeah, it'll be about 30, 40 minutes. It isn't, it's been like an hour the last two times. However, this is a very ad hoc and unprepared video I checked my notes for recording so I normally jot a few things down throughout the last couple of weeks and I have felt really really shoddy um so not made many notes apparently so ad hoc chaos maybe we'll find out so last couple of weeks things that have happened so floss tube number three I was like ill in with cold or in some kind of grottiness and a cough. I've managed to get rid of that apart from the cough slightly and now I'm illing for other reasons um, and also things have been hectic with life and work and so I feel like I've not managed to get much stitching in and I think I have I, like done more than what I thought when I've been sort of like looking at what I've done and like writing down you know my, note, like, my notes and things that I've actually just made just before like filming this. So, yeah, um, I've got a new start and I have brought my box of joy upstairs to show you. Okay, so, sounds slightly dodgy. Last time I mentioned that I had bought another box that was like the box of doom. However, this is for fun stuff and good stuff, which so it makes it a box of joy, whereas the box of doom is like really old unfinished projects, um, like projects never started, stuff that I've sort of, I'm not really keen on anymore. So yeah, Box of Joy is up here, whereas I couldn't even like lift it up the stairs last week, well, last two weeks ago, which was how bad I felt. So um, I'll give you a quick look. You might not be able to see properly, but I'll do my best um, and I'll probably pop some photos on Insta or something so I might have a chance to do that. Story of my life. However, this is my organised box of joy. She says holding it up very, very carefully is to not tip anything out of it. So, I, when I bought this, ditched out all of the file dividers and then very quickly retrieved them from the bin when I thought actually they could be of some use. So in here I've got stuff yet to do, stuff that I've done, stuffing patterns, um, completed projects, in fact shall I lift one of those out to show you later, I shall. Um, I've got hoops, which I don't use anymore, so not quite sure why I've got those in there. But then, feeling quite smug with myself, I've divided up all my extra fabrics into different dividers. Mm. Um, but they're all in different count orders, so regardless of the colours, I've got the different counts in here. So the chunkiest one by far, possibly, is the 18 counts. Uh, but I've also got 25, and I've got 28, and then I've got a few unused things, and then I've tucked like books and things at the back. So, my box of joy that I talked about last week, there you go, it does shut. Let's see. So yes, I thought I would show you that. 
Um, what else happened since? Oh, uh, so since last Foss tube. So in last Foss tube, I did a little singy Sesame Street kind of thing, and it turns out a few brave people came out of the woods with me, and they also sing counting songs in their head, which makes me feel less alone, shall we say? Uh, so thank you to anyone who fessed up to that. Uh, made me feel a bit better. And then apologies to anyone who, by doing it, I then put it into their heads. So, sorry about that. Um, I've, I've not watched a lot of Floss Tube. I've not done a lot of much, to be quite honest with you. But um, I've seen people sort of mentioning plans for Stitch Mania on the very little I have watched or sort of on Instagram and things like that. I, I'm not massively into sort of challenges and things and setting myself targets and stuff like that only because I set myself completely unrealistic targets I can't I, I don't know if I used to stitch faster like bef in the before times before fibro times um before I had like my really bad flare-up that sort of like kicked everything off and just completely flipped my life around so I don't know whether I used to stitch faster or whether like I don't know, my brain thinks I can actually do more than my hands can manage, basically. So, yeah, I don't think I'm going to do Stitch Mania, like, or anything, or, like, finish a mil start a million new projects, or a million new projects, but, like, 15 projects or five projects or anything like that, because having lots of whips really, really makes me itch and feel slightly, like, sweaty and nervous. So, I think... I am going to take an approach that uh, Sammy Liz, um, the Foss tuber, her mum adopts. So Sam has mentioned this before, that her mum basically says, just do what you love, doesn't matter, do what makes you happy. So, Stitch Mania, I'm basically going to do what I want, which is pretty much what I do anyway. So, yeah, if I happen to start something new, I will. But, I'm, but yeah, I'm going to sit back and just live through everyone else, Stitch Mania and all their new starts and all your new starts and hopefully probably get enabled and see some fantastic things that I actually want to stitch and um, I'll probably buy some more patterns because of it. Uh, so yeah, I just thought I'd mention Stitch Mania and yeah, no plans for me. Um, mm -mm -mm. Another thing sad day in this household super sad day zero my trusty needle minder is no more I have the magnets I managed to retrieve those swiftly before any animal swallowed them um, but yeah I'm using a different needle minder so I'm using the jaws needle minder that I picked up like last month I feel a bit like I'm cheating on zero and being disloyal so if anyone's got any suggestions for me it's for some good glue because I've never made a needle mind before um so this is just acrylic um I don't know what the magnets are but yeah any, any suggestions would be massively appreciated because I need to get zero back in action again because it's really sort of yeah sorry mate So I mentioned that I've not been doing much of anything and that includes watching Floss Tube but I know, or, or making notes for actually like doing this filming, so I know I've been given some shout outs and I know some people have commented if they've you know come over and like watched a video or subscribed or something like that but I've not written everyone down who I should have um, and I've just I've got to sort of crack on with the filming so I haven't had time to go back through my comments so if you have given me a shower or if you've given me a mention thank you so much I massively appreciate it and yeah thank you um, I know that Sammy Liz Sam mentioned me because uh, Sam and I are, we, we are enablers, we, we've, we've developed this enablement relationship over the past few weeks, so I think I enabled Sam with Oh My Stitches shop purchases and Sam enabled me by messaging me and telling me there was a sale on Thread Geeks. so yeah, 
hopefully we can continue the enablement because Sam stitches some fantastic stuff and hopefully we don't go broke together through making each other buy things. Um, Stitching Penguin, Ashley, I know Ashley is waiting for me and will continue to poke me to start my heaven and earth design, my final fantasy project. Uh, Ashley, keep watching, I have something for you. Um, so those are, that's pretty much the only two floss tubes I managed to um, like watch properly. I think I finished, yes, no, that's a, that's a fib. I finished Belushi Stitchers actually. Um, so Belushi Stitchers has oh, you, your Witcher pattern. Your Witcher finished project is absolutely amazing. I love it. Um, I need a Geralt in my life. I've seen a Yennefer and a Siri on Heaven and Earth Designs, but there is not a Geralt on there. And you've totally finished one that looks really, really good. So I might have to get that into a shopping cart and make a purchase sometime soon. I never knew about Gecko Rouge until I watched Joe's videos, Blue Stitchers. Uh, floss tubes so yeah gecko rouge i love the two cats pattern and kit that joe's got and i'm that again might have to sort of go on the wish list and also joe's got um i bought some plastic thingies because of joe so um fabric management um thread spoolers so i like, so like thread spools um the there's like little plastic things that wrap around them to to manage and make sure the threads don't come unwound so um but joe uses those for fabric management to sort of wrap around and help just sort of contain excess fabric so i bought some of those to have a go with so thank you very much for the idea and yeah go check out belushi stitchers I've not watched really watched anything else, caught up with anyone else. So yeah, that is for this next few weeks. Now I feel better than what I have been doing. Fingers crossed it stays that way. So I'm just going to grab a drink and then we will have a look at whips, works in progress and a new start. Right, so whips, works in progress. I think I mentioned at the start that I felt like I hadn't really done very much but when I started sort of gathering everything together I think I've done more than what I thought I had which is good because else I wouldn't really have anything to show you. So if I talk about what I haven't done first so last week I mentioned which, uh, my witch project and um, it's a dog's life kit. I haven't made a start on those yet. Also um, adopt a demo dog, my pattern that I was actually not a fair way through but sort of I've made a decent start on it. I've not done anything else with that because it went into temporary time out while I got some new threads to try and replace the red in it. So if you haven't watched Floss Tube number three um, I'll get JC to put the pattern somewhere. If I do this it confuses him because he sort of he says I point one way and then he'll put a picture up and if I point another way then I'll put another picture up but I never point the same way so if I just sort of go like this then he's, he's really going to hate that. Anyway, um, yeah, so adopt a demo dog. It's lovely, but the red wasn't gelling with me. So I changed it and swapped it out to good old 666 red. And the 666 on the black fabric looked a little orangey to me. This may well be my eyes. I am not saying it is orange, I know it is red, my head knows it is red, however, did not look so red to me. So I did an order for some more threads for the gamer stitch along that I'm doing, and I included some reds in that. So I haven't had a chance to have a look at them yet on the black fabric or have a or do anything with it, have a test stitch, but that those threads are here and that is a plan for next time. So what have I done? What have I done? Right, let's start with Dog on Fire. Oh, this is fine. So, this is what it looked like 
last time you saw it. And also I'll ask JC kindly to put up what it looks like when it's finished. And this, I could never get that the right way, which way to tilt my hands. This is where we are at now, which is quite washed out by the light. The colours are much more vibrant. So, what have I done? I tortured myself and did all the white in the speech bubble. I also filled in some more colour and have started... Oh, can't, oh, I can't, you just can't... There we go. Um, believe it or not, like before I start filming, I do actually lint roller everything, just to doubly make sure that everything's off it and there's still animal hairs. Um, anyway, so yes, I've now started filling out the orange. When I finished filming, I felt pretty shocking still after floss tube number three so I was quite happy for some mindless stitching and when I felt better that when I rallied a bit that's what I did I just like did the colour block stitching on here I did put a post upon Instagram about sort of stitching and punishing myself with the white thread on white fabric um, I felt that bad that night I actually abandoned it and then I picked it back up and I made myself do it. And lots of people were like, well, lots of people, but the people commented were like, oh, don't, you know, just break it up, do a bit here, and then switch to a different colour. And I just wanted it out of the way. I'm not, like, properly punishing myself to do it, but I know it needs doing, and I know I'm not going to enjoy it. So I just thought, just get it out of the way, which is what I did. I filled in the rest of the colours, and I started working my way down here. And then I realised, actually, there's white in his eyes as well. So I'm not <laughs> done with the white however the bulk of it is done and that's the main thing for me so there we go this is fine so the last time I had put 6,382 stitches in I've now got 8,064 in so I've put in 1,682 stitches and it means I'm about 43% through it which is good so I think I said last time by this time I'd like to have this pretty much done and sorted this square because there is another square of a comic strip to do over here so next time I definitely would like to have this done um, but we shall see what happens because what I like and what I do are two different things so dog on fire it's a present for Mr Dragon I'm still thoroughly enjoying it because it's a present if I need any kind of like mindless block colours where I don't have to think about it this is my go to this is my friend so that is was this is fine dog on fire and the pattern was chartered by Moto Ruxin and I think it's currently available oh my do I don't know actually um, so it was available via Moto Ruxin's Patreon but I don't I can't see that anymore so apologies if it's not available anymore but I know there are other people who have charted this in different ways so you'll be able to get your hands on it in one way shape or form so next excuse me I turn the page so next I have my gamer gaming gamer stitch along so this is a charity stitch along and it has been chartered and made by Pix Stitch. Uh, the charity, I've written it down this time, that's why I'm looking, the charity is Child's Play, which is a charity that helps uh, children via gaming who have sort of like medical conditions or in hospital or just it helps reach out to, to children via gaming so I work in education and I love gaming so yeah I was absolutely going to support this charity plus massive gamer so a gamer stitch along I wasn't not going to do it so we don't know exactly what it's going to look like when it's finished but it's going to be the word gamer in the Sega font with the letters 
all filled in with char- different characters from different um, video games and different eras. So this is what it looked like the last time you saw it. And this is where I am up to. Again, the light's sort of fading things today. I think I'm filming at a different time of day. I'm fil- filming later than what I normally do, so I haven't got as good natural light as well as the, like the light that's like the sun that JC bought. So last time you saw it, I was fully complete on week six, and obviously it's been two weeks, so I'm now sort of fully complete on week eight. I've done all the stitches, so that was an extra 1,438 stitches that I've put into this. So the, ooh, dropping it, there we go, while I'm reading. So the A is fully completed, and I've just got a bit of backstitch magic to do. Um, you can sort of see where I started the backstitch. I've not actually done it and the reason I've stopped is because I saw on Facebook that some people had done some additional backstitch on some of the characters to like sort of on Bart Simpson's eyes and things to make it pop a bit more so I was going to have a proper troll through the Facebook page and see what additional backstitching I could do to make it sort of pop a bit more potentially in places so Week three, there's not going to be a comfortable way for me to hold this. I was going to tuck it under my chin then, but that wouldn't have been a fantastic view for everyone. So we left it at Pikachu, and then we've worked along here, and then uh, we have gone sort of up and around and then come back down again. So we cut off sort of there for week three of A and then week four of A, continued down this side so additionally we have um, from here following that route we've got Samus, Sonic, Kirby, Captain Falcon, Spyro, Luigi, Hero from Sword of Mana, Marsh from Final Fantasy Tactics and then we have Roy from Fire Emblem, Link, Pete from Harvest Moon, Captain Falcon and Sora from Kingdom Hearts. So on Instagram after Floss Tube 3, um, I made like a little sort of diagram for who was where, just in case people couldn't figure it out. Because to be fair, sometimes I'm looking at it and squinted and going, can't see that. The duck on Duck Hunt, I can never see the duck on Duck Hunt without sort of, right, there we go. So that duck underneath my finger eludes me every time I look at it, even though I know it's there. So, yes, I shall do that for, once I've done the back stitch, I'll take a picture and I shall put in sort of like lines as to where everyone is. So these are all Game Boy Advance characters over the last couple of weeks. And yeah, the A is done. So we are on to M next. So we're getting there, oh God, every time. I still can't tell the direction I'm going in. So, M. The M release is going to be arcades. So my husband, JC, is very excited about the arcade one since he has a completely massive collection of Nintendo arcades. So fingers crossed there'll be some of his favourites in there. We shall see, because we don't know. So the release, I'm filming on Sunday. I normally do Sundays. So tomorrow, uh, the first part of M will be released. So we'll see what we get. Who knows? So, yeah, Game of Stitch along. I have anything else to say about that? Oh, it's an 18 count Ada. And it's got like sort of a silver fleck to it because I wanted it to sort of look like an old TV screen. It's not particularly working out looking like that but I'm kind of in love with the fabric even though I'm not particularly a sparkly person she says having sparkly nails right now and I'm doing it two over one on DMC and it was the same with the this is fine the dog on fire I pretty much my go-to is 18 count Ada with a two over one stitching with DMC threads so yeah 
cart up just a bit of ma backstitch magic and we'll see what we get with M. Right, okay, so where can I put this as safe? You can go there. Doing quite well for not having animal interruptions. So, this is my new start. I've been promising this, and promising myself this, and promising this on the video on the floss tubes for a while. And I actually started it. So, finding fantasy, let's unwrap you. So it's currently like sort of stored, wrapped up in a pillowcase that matches my sofa duvet. Because, you know, who doesn't love dinosaurs? I love dinosaurs. So I'll ask JC to put a, well, I know you've just seen that, but put a better image up on the screen of what it's actually going to look like when it's finished. I am doing this on 28 count Zweigart Brittany Evenweave and it's ivory cream coloured. I guess it is. Um, and I'm stitching it one over one. The pattern is by Heaven and Earth Designs and it's called Finding Fantasy by Rob Carlos. And that is how far I've got. There we go. So I'm working from top left going down. So this is the start of the dragon's wing that comes off from off page. You can't see the entirety of it. And technically, technically, I've got 227 stitches in this. And that would be out of 413,175. However, we had a bit of an incident. The incident being I have constant distractions when I stitch, constant distractions, like whether it be having to sort the dog out, I'm trying to think like where can I hold this, it's not in front of the microphone, yeah, sort the dog out because the dog's being needy because, you know, he loves attention, who doesn't, and he wants to play or whether he wants to go outside or whether he thinks I should be getting up off the sofa to do things. Um, I've normally got cats all over me or trying to get on me as well to try and sit and be my stitching buddies. They're not stitching buddies, they're stitching anarchists. Uh, they don't let me get on with stitching at all. So, yeah, I had a bit of an incident and I found that I have been distracted in some way by something because I, I can count, I, I can count, I can do this. However, I found that I miscounted about here with the brow which wasn't great, and then you would think, well, it's okay, because you can just sort of unpick that bit, but then I think I found something sort of further down as well. So I just thought, you know what, just ditch it all, just just start from, well, not from scratch, but from like there. So yeah, I think I put a good couple of hundred stitches in, and yeah, they all came out. However, I do love stitching on the 28 count and I love the coverage that one over one is giving me even when I've like ripped out everything that I've done pretty much. I, yeah, frogging, pulling stitches out on 28 count, that's not great. Um, that is really, really traumatic. Worse than if you have to do it on small, on like other counts that are, give you larger, yeah, I'm pretty annoyed at that. Like, I was like, I was raging. I really was raging. And, you know, I sort of say I get distractions and things, but I knew, I'm more angry that I knew something was wrong with it and I didn't go back and double check it because I knew I'd been distracted. I knew I'd sort of like got enough and I knew the cats was trying to like sort of like battle to get onto my lap and under my, my stitching. And I sort of, in my head, in my head, I went, right now, come on, 
just double check that because are you sure that's right and then I was that eager to get on with it because I was like even though I'd only put a little bit in it I was like yeah come on stitching this now um I was like no no it's fine it's fine we don't need to double check it it's fine it was not fine so yeah the moral of this story is I've now had the pain of unpicking 28 count never again I will always trust myself <laughs> and trust my instincts when it comes to you need to double check that because that's not quite right. Um, what else can I say about this? So yeah, 28 counts, absolutely fine. I'm loving that, loving the coverage. Q-snap, like the Q-snap, I haven't really used them before. However, I had the eight by eight Q-snap as it was, and it wasn't really helping me stitch. So I normally stitch one-handed front go around to the back and I found I was it was I was catching myself I don't know if it was like the fibro or whatever or whether I'm just not used to using um a q-snap so I also because when I went I went in hard on the q-snaps I thought if I'm going to do it I'm going to do it properly so I ordered six by six eight by eight and eleven by eleven so I grabbed six by six and I made it a nice little rectangle so it wasn't as wide on the side uh, rhymes and I'm getting on a lot better with that one thing I would love some advice on is fabric management so as you can see I've got a very glamorous hair clip like clipping out the the side fabric and I'm sort of I can one-handed, I can two-handed stitch. I was sort of finding myself doing that naturally and then I sort of thought, now is not the time to be trying new stuff, George. And I stopped doing it because I knew, because I thought I'd messed something up. Did that anyway, so I probably could have continued. Um, but yeah, so when I'm stitching, I'm sort of like holding it like that and going back to front. And I've got that, but I can't position it properly so that my hand's not catching. The lovely little thread spool things from Belushi Stitches that, that, that Belushi Stitches uses, I they were like really weighty and heavy um, on the side of the fabric, and again it was sort of like hanging out, sort of catching them. And then I've got all this business here that I just can't, I just can't. So I sort of at the minute my technique is to sort of ravel it up. I know you can't see that, but ravel it up underneath me have the pillowcase under that and then when a cat comes to try and dive on me or a dog comes to try and dive on me I just sort of quickly cover it up to try and protect it the best I can from the animals claws fur and if it's the dog bless him let's just face it drool or licking uh, the dog's tongue so how how what what can I do with this please or, I mean, I'm coping with it like this, it's fine, but if there's just something to sort of keep it nice and tidy and sort of folded up better, I'd be up for ideas for that. I know some people sort of took them into grime guards. I haven't got any grime guards. I was going to try and make one because I couldn't really see any that I liked um, for the sizes that I wanted. So, yeah, please help. Suggestions, please. That'd be fantastic. The other thing that's annoying me about stitching this, and it's well, not that the fabric's an annoyance, it is, but it's like just it's natural. It's going to be when you've got like a massive piece of fabric, so I can deal with that. So the other thing that is annoying me when I'm stitching, and it is also animal related. I love my animals, I do, but they're just oh, they're just a nightmare. I have all the threads stored as stitch bow which is great I mean I love I love the organization I live for organization however when I've got two cats like one cat there one cat there I'm trying to stitch like that and I've got the dog over here I don't have anywhere to put this massive sort of folder and I don't really have any the reason I liked them in the plastic is so that they were free of animal hair as much as possible so yeah, I don't really have the arm movement to be like kind of unfurling plastic wallets and things. So I think as much as I love the Stitch Bow organisation, that is going to have to go onto bobbins. Because I can sort of T-Rex over to a, a bobbin holder box to grab the 
right right colour there, but not so much sort of unfurl plastic wallets and drag out stitch bows and start taking threads off them. So I still love that. I will still use it. However, it might be when office number two gets sorted, I'm, I might have a table or something which I can sort of balance that on and have that upstairs instead. So yeah, that's going to be, yeah, we're going to bobinate, I think. So anyway, finding fantasy. There we go. So hopefully I will have more of this to show you next time, but I have made a start, which, I, and uh, yeah, I'm not hating it. I'm, I'm, it's not like the confetti on the game of Stitch Along is real. That is like, and I know that there will be like confetti on this. However, it's a good start. It's not that bad. It's okay. I can say that. Come back to me in two weeks time when I'm telling you how much I absolutely hate it because there's so much confetti. We'll see. But yeah. If you are stitching any um, Rob Carlos pattern, oh, we've got a, got a dog, then you are more than welcome to join us on Instagram. So, Stitchy Cat Lady twenty six and I, hello, um, we have started a casual Rob Carlos fantasy stitch along. So. Stitch Cat Lady 26 is much further on than I am. That's just the dog walking over. Oh, my things I've got to show you. Right, okay. Um, they are much further on their Rob Carlos project, which is uh, Planet Dragons. I also have the pattern for Planet Dragons. It's really great. It's beautiful. Um, but yeah, if you just want a bit of a casual, if you've got any Rob Carlos patterns, if you're stitching it anyway, just sort of a, I guess a, a support group, the group being the two of us at the moment. Then if you head over to Instagram, you can have a look. I did sort of like a cheesy little Instagram post about it and uh, join us or see how we get on because I will post now. I've started it at least weekly progress on this or if I get a significant amount done or something exciting or some more traumatic unpicking then yeah, that'll all go on there. The good, the bad, and the frogging. So, there we go. So that's that's all I've got to show you for, for works in progress. Uh, I've mentioned the next projects, like previously, that, yeah, I haven't started anything else yet, but I do have the fabrics for what I want to start. I think I want to go, just think about plans, I definitely want to go back to Demodog and have a look and sort the reds out. I'd love to get to halfway on This Is Fine, Dog on Fire. We'll see. I've been saying that for a couple of weeks now. A couple of couple of weeks now, a couple of floss tubes now. So we'll see how we get on with that. I definitely want to keep caught up with the game of Stitch Long because that was totally not worth not keeping on top of that. That was like, that was intense catching up with that. And then, yeah, we'll just see what I can get into finding fantasy. I think if I was to do something when I stop recording this, I think I'd probably start on finding fantasy because, yeah, I've waited so long for it. And, yeah, I'm really, really enjoying that. So, yeah, those are my works in progress. If you want to stay, I've got stitching purchases next and then it'll just be random bits of things and life stuff and, and you can find out why I'm feeling so shocking still but not coughing so it's okay so give me two seconds I'm going to grab a drink again and then we'll have a look at all the stuff I've bought right I am back and I have defuzzed myself because I've just had to give a bit of love to the dog and I've also removed the eyelash that was like there throughout all of the whips and uh, the new start so that won't annoy anyone anymore because I'm not recording that on 20 minutes again um, but it certainly made me focus on it all the way through me watching that back so anyway stitching purchases so what have I bought in the last two weeks well it was payday so you know I obviously had to buy something first thing I got was first things I got were two more 
DMC boxes for bobbins and three packs of 56 bobbins so I think they came in at just under £20 delivered from Lakeside Needlecraft so Lakeside Needlecraft thank you again super fast delivery and great customer service as usual so um yes right so whether that was some kind of foreshadowing about having to bobbinate my finding fantasy i don't know but i did actually order those before i started stitching finding fantasy and came across the stitch bow issue so i got those because i wanted to separate out my non-dmc threads into their own box and also because the m threads for the game of stitch along which I also ordered um, probably aren't all going to fit in the box that's currently got all my G and A threads in for the game of stitch along so I thought well if I'm buying one box I might as well buy two because uh, Lakeside Needlecraft do their postage in brackets uh, so you spend between this amount and this amount and postage is X amount so yeah it just that worked out by two boxes and then three lots of the 56 cards um so yes the the threads weren't from lakeside neil craft they were from allison 957 on ebay i can't remember how much they were um but allison 957 does like bundles so you can like buy any 36 threads any 50 threads whatever and if they don't and if they don't have a number uh, that you want if you just send them a message then they're super quick and we'll put a listing up for you for that amount so those were my first few purchases then i was doing so so well with the heaven and earth design sale i really was i I, I honestly it was like I, I only broke on the last day and I got these charts we've got a cat hang on he's gonna jump up I've got a dog chasing a cat no I've not got a dog sat down anyway so <clears throat> yes I did so well and then I broke on the last day of the sale <laughs> Sorry, just extra cat um and got the four charts and I, I, I love ravens and magpies I do they're my favourite birds so I also love colourful patterns even though I'm a bit dark so yeah couldn't resist those ones when I saw them and then I mentioned that Sammy Liz my enabler of choice um, mentioned there was a sale on Thread Geek's PDF charts now I love Sam's Two Towers pattern and that was on sale so I got that and then obviously you start browsing and there are more patterns so yeah I got a few more as well just to make it a nice round four patterns on top of the four heaven and earth designs on that I also bought so were those the only patterns that I bought no they weren't I would have to live several lifetimes to stitch everything that I've got so, a long time ago, probably a year ago, on Instagram, I did, I can't remember whether it was on, it was 31 days of cross stitch in July or whether it was prior to that. Anyway, um, people just mentioned like things I might like and one of the things they said I might want to look into is uh, Teresa Wensler patterns. So I've been casually stalking ebay ever since and checking out like paper charts and patterns and kits on there and this is after saying i don't really like samplers in plus two three the samplers are not my kind of thing to stitch i'm not really keen on them even though i bought the sampler book i also now have two sampler patterns if you're hearing any noise it's because there's dog versus cat out there in a friendly way i might hasten to add so I ended up with a fantasy sampler. There we go. A pattern there from the eBay, which is gorgeous. I do love that. I, I don't know when I'm going to stitch it. However, 
this was listed and sort of finished the same time around as the as a kit for the same pattern so my other great enabler JC said well just just bid on them both and see what you get and then yeah so might have ended up with the kit to match the sampler yeah this this is this is this is what it's like so excuse the rattling um we're gonna have to pass on one of those um because i can't keep both that's not fair so uh, one of those will be getting relisted or possibly given away because you know give back to the community so we'll have a look at doing that sometime in the future but then that's not the only Teresa Wentzler sampler <laughs> at the same time someone was having clear out and they also listed the castle sampler so obviously because I've got it in my hands I totally bought that one too because, because they sort of they're kind of a pair because in, in my head they're sort of a pair but not just because they're both samplers but this castle is in another different Teresa Wentzler design which also which has the castle and a dragon in it so it's sort of like it's sort of like a trilogy now the pattern with the castle and the dragon I have as a kit and it is in the box of doom because it's from years ago years and years and years ago and it was probably my first sort of big even though it's not big cross stitch as a teenager maybe I, I, I can't remember but it, in, I've, I've taken a look at it, like everything's been pulled out from a box of doom and I think I went wrong at some point that I would have to identify but I think it was the first project that I'd ever sort of really blended threads in so it was two strands of threads but like one of one colour, one of a different colour so I've gone completely like, I completely peaked on somewhere but what a reason to unpick it and try and figure out what's going on with it because I could have that and these all together to make a set so yeah, super happy with finally being able to pick those up. Put them down there. What else did I buy? Oh, um, they're downstairs. I haven't brought them upstairs. Uh, the plastic. Um, I'm just gonna move that to that. Someone's investigating. So yes, the plastic um, bobbin things that Belushi Stitchers used. Ah, oh, there as well, I've got a cat now. Um, I also bought those and they were from Amazon. Um, they, they only cost maybe like a few pounds just to try and help the fabric management. I'll get JC to put an image in if he hasn't already. And the final proper sort of stitchy thing I bought that's not massively particularly stitchy thing. Sorry, I've got cat encroachment now. And cat bearing. Leo, just go down there a bit, darling. Goodbye. Okay. Yeah, the final sort of stitchy thing is I mentioned that I was inspired to buy a proper notebook. Now, I love stationery. I, I love good stationery. But I don't get a chance to use it because pretty much all of my stuff that I do is electronic and I, you know, like, I don't I don't carry around paper these days anymore from a sort of confidentiality GDPR point of view um, and from a sharing point of view everything's just so much easier just stored in the cloud so I saw that other people had stitchy journal things I thought I want one of those and I love Starry Night so ooh, that's a cat failing to jump on the desk we were doing so well. We were doing so well for like 40 minutes an hour. And I mean, obviously I had like outtakes and things that you don't see. So yeah, we were doing so well and now all the animals are congregated and are causing chaos. But yes, um, love, love Starry Night. 
so I mean not that I've like done or written in anything anything in it at all it's also got a beautiful believe in yourself inspirational quote that and make the most of every day I'm, I'm not an inspirational quote or phrase person so we might just have to stick something over those but yes so the, yeah I'm looking forward to actually writing something and using this as a notebook for stitchy things look how pretty it is I love it so if you're here just for stitching stuff I now have no safe place to put things that, are, that I'm surrounded um, then yeah if you're joining me just for stitching things and then that's it so thank you very much for watching and if you'd like to stay then we are going to talk about life and random stuff and you can sort of know what's been going on so yeah see you next time if you're leaving and if you're not let's crack on so Randomly life stuff. Plus tube three, I was feeling dreadful and I had the cough. Got a tiny bit of a cough left, which is why I've been pausing to have my drinks. Um, but I was pretty much out of it. Not out of it, like spaced out of it, but I was pretty much out of the other side of it. Um, and then I had my second MMR vaccine. Now, you might be thinking, she means COVID, doesn't she? No, I, I mean at MMR. So my mum isn't anti-vax in any way, shape or form, but my sister had an allergic reaction when she was given um, her vaccines. Um, so my mum never let me be vaccinated. So I was just at the doctor's for just for something else. And they, um, the nurse that I was there to see, she was just like, oh, I, I see on, your, on the records, you've not had your MMR. And it was like a really weird thing because no, I sort of, sort of thought about it before, but never like sort of thought about it to ask about it, to like sort of say, should I have this now, even as an adult, is it worth me having it? So yeah, I sort of went, this was back in February. And I sort of went, yeah, 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 I've not had that. That's right. She's like, well, do you want it then? I'm like, what, like right now? And that's the, the story of how I had my first um, MMR jab back in February. So I then had to, I, th I was then offered the COVID vaccine, which I, which I have had. And I had to wait like sort of like a month at least in between vaccines. So now I've had to fit in MMR2 before COVID vaccine 2, which is in June. So my body does very special things. I don't know if it did special things prior to having fibromyalgia because obviously I've never been vaccinated before. Um, but yeah, I don't know if it's the fibro or just like the vaccine side effects, but I had that on Monday of this week and it's Sunday. And um, yeah, that I, I didn't feel great after that. So I just got over whatever I had. Two weeks ago I had that and I had some like special things going on I had like I, I don't know if it caught if it was like a side effect but I had a massive migraine my fibro started kicking off um and yeah it was all pretty fun so but I'm I think I'm out of that now however when I went to go see um Gemma for my nails doing the, one of the ladies there she's like a she's like a registered nurse um because I do like aesthetics and things like that and we were talking about the hay fever um, jab that you can have. I was like, "Tell me more about this magical thing," because I, I do when I get hay fever, I get it, I get it bad. It's not attractive in any way, shape, or form. So I'm normally like ice streaming, like puffy face. Um, so yeah, I've also been, I've sort of like had the hay fever jab as well. So bring it on. I'm going to be like fully covered for absolutely everything by June. Um, so yeah, the, the hay fever thing I had yesterday and I'm sort of feeling okay from that, but yeah, MMR2 did not, was not great for me, but hey ho, needed doing. Uh, I have had mumps, um, twice and once I had mumps and shingles at the same time, that was neither fun nor attractive. Um, so yeah, that's hopefully not going to happen again. Uh, what else? Oh, yeah, I mentioned nails and of like hair. If that's all sorted, so I feel slightly more humany and me now. I'm not quite sure on the red. I mean, I like the red. I love red. I was blonde for quite a while, and I think because my hair had faded to that 
paler colour, like the sort of like the nice sort of peachy pinky colour that it was. Like I had this red put on, I was like, it's <gasps> a bit dark, isn't it? And it's I, this is like this is the red that I normally go because I can't go proper like pillar box red anymore because of work. So yeah um that's all sorted it was my mum's birthday as well so we had a little excuse to have chocolate cake and chocolate cake and cream if you're jc just plain chocolate cake for me um so that was good we went around and saw my mum properly um lots of people have been giving me recommendations for things to watch so if you are one of those people thank you very much i have got a list going on I got I haven't watched any of the things that have been recommended to me. I sort of went down the I couldn't really think at one point. So my go-to when I can't think of something I want to watch is to browse the Amazon it's leaving soon list. It's leaving Prime Video soon. So yeah, I went down that rabbit hole and we watched like Red Light, Girl Interrupted, Heathers. I think I went through a bit of Rudy and Rider and then I went through a bit of Christian Slater because I then went Alone in the Dark, Alone in the Dark 2 and then like more horror kind of things but yeah I got reminded about Dead Files I loved Dead Files that was so great a TV series I really did love how the format of that paranormal investigation show so um I got reminded about Firefly but my, my memory is terrible it's because it's because of the fibro and the CFS it's sort of like trash my memory and it's, it's great because I've sort of I know I've watched these things but I can't remember things about them so it's like I have the comfort of knowing I've watched something and that I don't have to wholly concentrate on it because you know it'll be in there somewhere um so which is great for stitching but then it's like watching something brand new all over again so yeah that's one of the advantages of having a rubbish memory is just you get constantly get to watch new stuff even though you've watched it before <laughs> um so anyway yeah if you've recommended something to me thank you very much uh, I'll be working my way through those. I'm just looking because I've got one purchase, which is sort of a stitching purchase, but it didn't really fall into that category, so I've just I left it out. Now, things that I love. Excuse the rattling. I love. Oh, I might have summoned a cat. No. I love rock music. I love most kinds of rock music. But one of my pleasures is, and one of the first things that got me into rock music, to be fair, I believe, based on my CD collection, is Bon Jovi. Now, I love belt it out, sing your heart out music, and Bon Jovi for me is that. I also love animals. This is going somewhere, I promise you. I also love animals and horses and any excuse to visit a farm. So if you're ever in this neck of the woods um, in Yorkshire, then we have a place called Cannon Hall Farm. And it's a great place to visit. There's lots of things to do. There's lots of animals. There's like play stuff for the kids. They do racing, like sort of like sheep racing. It's not, it, it's great. It is really good. But um, they've been on TV recently and one of their ponies is sort of like quite flamboyant and has like a, a, a sort of a, a fantastic hairstyle, quite reminiscent of uh, John Bon Jovi. So the horse is named John Bon Pony. Check that out. John Bon Pony pin badge. Now, I mentioned earlier, I, I have no idea how to make needle minders. I, thought, I got two of these because I thought if there was ever a reason for me to make a needle minder, John Bonpone was that reason. Yes, th that might happen. So yeah, I got two. One because we, so we collect pin badges in this house and also because if I messed up the needle minder one, then I always had a, a backup one. So yeah, John Bonpone, I like that, like a good pun. Uh, and plays on words. I do like that. Um, what else can I ramble about? Anything else? I don't think there is anything else. It's been pretty, I don't want to say quiet because work's been ramping up. It's getting busy again with work now, which means like my fibro can, well, not my fibro, my CFS can sort of play up when work gets busy and I crash on a night so fingers crossed it won't ramp up to the point of complete annihilation of free time 
Oh yeah, the, yeah. So the other thing that we've been doing is the garden, um, which also takes up free time. We say we I supervise and provide drinks while JC does the digging. Um, but yeah, we've been in this house a couple of years now and we really need to sort the garden out. So that's on the list. We have tried to sort the garden out every year and then got to a certain point, abandoned it, forgot to cover it in membrane so that the weeds don't grow back. And then, yeah, everything has just grown back. So it's sort of one of those like Groundhog Day, soul destroying jobs that just seems to get repeated. So the garden is on the agenda because I would love to go and do some stitching out in the garden and like just sit out there with the dog because he loves to be outside but I don't know I see a lot about dog thefts at the minute not particularly in this area necessarily but just in general and I, I don't like leaving him outside on his own so yeah that'll be another potential time suck along with work that means maybe less time for stitching but fingers crossed should be fine and it'll be a good end goal we haven't got anywhere with office number two. I think we opened the door to office number two when, yeah, that's going to be a lot of work. We're not doing that today. Um, we're not starting that today. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much my life update. So, anything or anyone I have talked about, I'll make put sure I put them in the description or put, I put a link and that kind of thing. Um, if you want to follow me on Instagram, I normally post a few times a week on Instagram. Um, you can keep up with Finding Fantasy on there and just do any other random bits. I sort of keep, tend to keep to the stitchy side of things or maybe occasional pet appearances. Um, I did on my blog, I don't think I published it yet, start to put this together for my own personal use of... Um, like floss tubes I'm following and actually actively caught up with so that needs posting but I think I just had to do a little bit to it and check through um but yeah so I hope you've enjoyed it uh, feel free to leave a comment um yeah I'll be back in two weeks time hopefully <laughs> two weeks time is that no yeah so we're okay so two weeks time I should have had no like vaccinations <laughs> in that two weeks um i'll hopefully have got lots of stitching done and yeah so thank you very much for watching i hope you've enjoyed it if you've not watched any more of my videos i this is number four so i've got three other ones that you can watch if you'd like to um yeah take care of yourselves and i'll see you next time so one of the advantages of having a shoddy memory is the the ability to be able to rewatch things and watch them like new. One of the disadvantages is you forget stuff. So I was just packing up after the floss tube, which I don't think many people mention, but can be quite, you know, intense having to like put everything back away again um, that you've dragged out. However, I got one of the finishers out of the box of doom and literally I was just like packing stuff away. I'm like, why is that out like? yeah I said I was going to show that so very very quickly one of my more recent finishers which you might have seen if you follow me on Instagram um, is this pattern here so it's a bossy threads kit Oops. and it is new beginnings and it's a little hedgehog it's very sweet so this is a gift that I mentioned in maybe the previous floss tube or floss tube number two where I'm stitching for Mr Dragon the this is fine dog on fire meme and I'm stitching for one of my other colleagues um, the it's a dog's life when I actually start it but I work with three people so I stitch this that's terrible, I can't see what I'm doing here. There we go. This little fella who I named Marv, Marvin, while I was stitching him. And yeah, he was from a kit. Uh, he's from 14 count, he's two over one. And it didn't take that long. Um, he looks a bit less washed out from a distance, there we go. It's a bit more true to life with oh no, with the colours. 
Um, yeah, so he was a nice short-ish stitch. A um, bit of back stitching for the details for the, the spines, which is really cool. And the person who I stitched this for loves hedgehogs and giraffes, so it was like a, a toss-up between the bossy thread giraffes or hedgehogs. And there's another hedgehog pack, at least one more hedgehog um, kit as well. So, yeah, um, that's one of my most, more, my more recent finishers. It's obviously not an FFO, uh, fully finished object, because I don't know. I don't know whether to just sort of like wrap it up in a bit of tissue paper and just, well, obviously, probably iron it and wash it first. Um, but, yeah, I think I'm just going to probably wrap it up in a bit of tissue paper and hand it over and then it can be just displayed how she wants it. Um, or if she wants to pick a frame once I've handed it to her, I don't mind framing it myself. But I do love the Bothy Threads, uh, the Rendale Designs fabrics. Uh, so that was a chart called New Beginnings and it's part of the Rendale Designs by Hannah Dale's set. Well, set, there's like loads of them, um, of patterns. And I think I bought this from Lakeside Needlecraft. And um, yeah, so that's one of my more recent finishes that I completely forgotten about, even though I only mentioned it while I was recording Floss Tube number four earlier on. So there you go. So actually, bye now. Take care and I'll see you in two weeks time.